Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus Christ. There is none other in heaven or on earth. Welcome to another episode of Hope in Christ with Denise. Here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast, where we place our hope in the only hope there is, Christ our Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. I am your host, Minister Denise, and I welcome you back to today's show. Today we have another phenomenal author that we'll be sharing, Angela Harris. Um, Before Angela comes on, I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer, and then we'll begin. Father, we thank you, O God, for another opportunity to share your word to share what you're doing, O oh God, for your kingdom. We pray, O oh God, for those that are listening, wherever they are in the world. We pray, O oh God, that they will hear something that will help them and lead them and guide them, O oh God, to you. So, Father, we thank you for just another opportunity, another opportunity to speak your word, to speak what you've given us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. So, again, Thank you all for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. Again, I'm your host, Minister Denise Walker, and I am the founder of Hope in Christ Ministries. And at Hope in Christ, we are healthy overcomers purpose, and we maintain our eternal perspective as we seek our true identity in Christ Jesus. So, again... Thank you for tuning in. Today we have another phenomenal author. Um, Just a quick note, um, meet us on Clubhouse on Friday evenings from 8 to 9 as we have Christian authors share, as we share panel discussions and all different things related to Christian books. And so, again, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. So without further ado, we have another author that's sharing on the podcast today, and we have author Angela Harris. So Angela, tell us a little bit about yourself before we start in on the questions about your book. Thank you, Denise. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Truly grateful, and thank you for the prayer. I totally appreciate that. First of all, um, my name is Angela Harris. I am the founder of Wellness of Life. I have a holistic health and wellness facility in Sacramento, California. We also have holistic nutritional supplements. I also complimentary do wellness coaching along with people's cleansing program, most importantly, helping them to understand that cleansing is all about the release and getting people in the restorative state and doing it with ease. Also, I do public speaking, and I just recently have written my first book, So I'm excited to share today and contribute that with all of you. And uh, most importantly, I just believe in contributing our gift, talent, skill, and ability in order for people to grow and evolve. And my lane is health and wellness, and I love to educate in that capacity. However, I also like to teach the physiology component um, as we're taught so much about the anatomy and, you know, certain diagnoses that we receive and accept And the physiology component tells us about the function so we're able to value and respect our bodies so that we're able to be more proactive in the preventative health care if that's a person's choice. Wow. Thank you, Angela, for what you're doing out here. Um, Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm going to ask my first question, and it's a general question. And the question is, when – did you first realize that you wanted to write? Well, I realized it latter part of my career, and I felt like throughout my career I was being prepared. And I'm just grateful that people enjoyed, you know, the fellowship or the connection or the health and wellness education and, they always told me, like, I need to write a book. And the information that I was providing, you know, is very valuable. And when was I going to write? And I always said, you know, when it's divinely meant to be. And I had to go through, you know, a lot of different things throughout life and throughout my career in order for me to manifest this first book. 
And I'm so grateful I, I did that because, for me, I just truly believe wisdom is power. And I wanted to be able to give to the people not to share but in full totality. And in that, hoping that I help so many people based on, you know, my clinical research or my personal life, uh, to be able to put it in a, you know, holistic wellness approach so that people truly get better in all aspects of their life, not just the area and profession that I practice in, which is specifically, you know, digestive restored care internally. Uh, so I would say the encouragement of people and really throughout, you know, my career, but when it was really finalized as to it's time to do it, I would say later and then being inspired by other people that were doing it and attending a few workshops to really know I was ready. Amen, amen. Um, And my next question is, how long did it take you? This is another general question. How long did it take you to finish your book? Well, as I was in my research mode, because I love the research, I'm a researcher too, I realized that I was a free writer most of my life, just journaling, you know, educational studies. Um, I love Bible study and just doing research, always taking notes, always, you know, doing clinical um, research as well. I was writing my book just based on journaling and my thought process during those times and my evaluations and assessments. So the book was being written without me really knowing that, okay, it's going to manifest itself. Now I have to put it together. So when I put the book together, I would say it wasn't as challenging as I thought it was going to be because I had everything that I needed, and it was just a matter of how can it be relatable to the reader so that they're able to grasp something out of it and take away something from it in order for them to grow in their own personal life and in their own health and wellness, and be an example, you know, for other people as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, my next question is to tell us the title of your book and briefly describe the summary, and we're going to get into it a little bit more. Yes. So the name of my book is Wellness of Life, and it's all about whole body wellness with ease. Whole body wellness, and I and I love that topic because um, that's something I had to deal with. I had to go to holistic care when it came to like I heard you when you were speaking. Um, when it came to doctors, reg, well, I don't know how to describe it, but some doctors just want to push medicine at you, and um, right. and holistic. I had to learn how to control my blood sugar and things like that. So I truly appreciate what you're sharing today. Thank you. Yes, I think, you know, so many times, like I was expressing earlier, that, you know, we know the anatomy. You know, um, certain people know um, certain things just based on certain education levels or what they've read and researched on their own or just taking a course or a class once they've been diagnosed. However, the physiology component, people are not really taught. So I always like to teach the physiology because that's more preventative and proactive. You know, like what is the function of that vital organ? What does that system truly do? What does it mean, you know, in certain aspects of how the body communicates to you naturally? You know, not that it's a diagnosis, but just something that is communicating that you need to change, shift, and adapt to. Absolutely, and a lot of times you're right. We don't know, um, and uh, just an example for me, I have a um, diagnosis of asthma, and I was constantly given prednisone, prednisone, and nobody ever told me that it affected my blood pressure and my blood sugar until mm-hmm. I was a holistic doctor. So, yes, absolutely. Well, I'm glad that you are open to the opportunity to understand and learn both sides because it's necessary because there are certain things that we do need 
you know, Western medicine for, for a certain diagnosis to know what you're addressing or dealing with, and, you know, lab and x-rays and whatnot, and certain scans um, for the body that we need. And then the holistic approach teaches you about your body, not just one aspect of one diagnosis, one part, one symptom, one reaction, but the holistic whole picture approach as when it's compromised just from that localized condition, state of well-being, or diagnosis or illness. Yes, yes, yes. Um, my next question for you is, I know you briefly talked about um, what you desire, you know, the plan for your book. Can you go a little bit more into detail? What are your plans for your book, workshops, anything that you just have planned out or you want to do? Yes, absolutely. So definitely workshops. Um, I do workshops. I also do public speaking and maybe a certain topic that I'm invited to speak about. Um, and it's, you know, pretty much mentioned in my book and they want me to elaborate more about it. Uh, also, you know, podcasting and as well as, you know, just the education and getting it out there. So whether it's, you know, one-on-one in my clinic mode facility or it's me doing public speaking workshops or being invited to speak, um, totally open to because I love outreach and I love helping people. Um, and then, you know, just, you know, doing the podcasting, um, which I've been um, definitely grateful to do for, you know, people, and I do enjoy being invited as a guest to share, you know, based on whatever their lane is or my approach to certain topics that they may have on their show or their program. And, um, you know, I'm very open to whatever is going to help people. Um, So I have this willingness and this attitude of servitude. Um, So for me, it's very open, um, and I don't limit myself to certain aspects of educating people because people need to know. And so the more we have the conversation about it, the more people hear and listen to it, they won't be so uncomfortable about it, and hopefully it will become more familiar. So they're able to value and respect it, and we can create some type of culture of consistency. Amen, amen. And if you have your book available, would um, you mind reading an excerpt from it? Yes, yes. My favorite is my synopsis, you know, pretty much what the book is about and hopefully what people will receive from it. And um, what it says is, have you ever wondered and wanted to know how your body functions internally? or what causes you to feel depleted of energy and lack of mental fortitude. Also, what causes sickness, illness, disease, and how aging begins. Wellness of Life will give you a clear, simple, holistic insight and pure explanation of how we all have been given all that we need for whole body wellness with ease. That is good. That is good. So, um, I was listening to just the different parts of it. That does sound really, really good. Um, It's important to know, especially when you said about energy. So can you give just a little bit about energy um, for the audience? Absolutely. So what happens is, you know, our digestive system is 27 to 30 feet. And in that system, we have about 20 feet of small intestine where we get 90% of our absorption. And we absorb everything on a cellular level. We digest everything on a cellular level as well. So it's not just food and what we eat, but it's also feelings, emotions, and whatnot. And a lot of times people don't understand that the large intestine, which is the colon, that's where 90% of our neurotransmitters are. So we're talking about fight or flight, dopamine, serotonin, hormones, depression, anxiety, happiness, joy, all these moving parts that create people to behave and react a certain way. And it's all in the digestive system. And so teaching people about the digestive system and teaching them about absorption 
and how to process and how to release is going to help the energy component of the body. With absorption and proper absorption, what happens is the body is able to get what it needs on a cellular level so that the cells thrive, so that you do have the energy and you don't feel depleted. When you have poor quality of certain things, what happens is you have malnutrition, which creates malabsorption, which the cells are not getting what they need and the person becomes depleted. And so... This comes with conversations. This also comes with certain environments, as well as our food and what we drink. And so how people process things and digest things is going to determine, do the cells thrive and remain whole, or is it going to be affected and it begins to divide, and that's when it's depleted and other illness and disease can set in. So our energy is so important because we want our food to turn into energy, not just food is fuel, but our food to turn into energy, our calories to turn into energy. Everything is energy and mass and substance and chemicals, you know, so it's not like food is fuel so it just dissipates or you burn calories and it disintegrates and nothing exists. It, it, it exists. People don't understand that it truly exists. There is some type of matter and substance, and whether you release it or the body reabsorbs it, and how a person breaks it down is going to be a component is are they going to be sluggish or are they going to have heightened awareness or the energy in order to function at a full capacity that, you know, most people don't understand what that is until they experience it. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. I was like, okay, how do I get this book? Can I, you know... Listen to your mm-hmm. podcast because this is awesome, awesome. A lot of, um, again, a lot of things are not taught. So awesome. And the explanation and the, simpli- the sim- simplicity of the explaining of what you're, you know, explaining to the audience as well. Yes, I like to keep things very simple, um, you know, insight for people to understand because if you make it too complex, People cannot, you know, really be consistent. And you don't want them to have stress on top of the stress that they're already having based on them trying to be well. We have enough stress. So why would you add more stress to a person's state of condition that's already stressful? Absolutely. Absolutely. And before we answer the next few questions, can you tell them how to grab that book? Because that's an awesome resource. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yes, so Amazon.com, um, I have the book on ebook and the paperback. And then also my store, my brand, wellnessoflifeproducts.com, you can also purchase it as well. And if you're in the area, you can always come to our clinic and facility, and we also have it here too. And do you have any um, opportunities of virtual consultation or anything like that? Yes, I give 15-minute complimentary consultation. Um, so my email address is wellnessoflife at gmail.com. And in the um, comment reference part, you can put 15-minute consultation. And I'd be more than happy to help and assist answer any questions or help a person even with guidance and what questions to ask their physician. I help people with that, too, to establish a better relationship with their physicians as well. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, A couple fun questions I want to ask. One of them is, have you ever... um, Have you ever had a surprising moment after writing? Like, what was that most surprising moment after publishing the book and, you know, finishing it up, what would would you say was that surprising moment? I felt like I was contributing one of my gifts that was already within me, and I didn't know. Um, And it was like a hidden treasure I had found that God had given me. And it was like he was telling me, See, you can do that too. 
and I was just elated, and I just felt like the book was written for me, too. It was such a um, connection of so much, like, love, grace, and mercy, and it was divinely written that it was so encouraging to know I had not just gave this contribution, but I gave a part of myself. Amen, amen, amen. And another fun question is, what was that? Uh Uh-oh, because we, as authors, we all have that. Wait a minute, Uh uh-oh, after we publish. Um, Uh One of my uh-ohs is, I would say my uh uh-oh, my biggest uh uh-oh was marketing. Like, uh uh-oh, you mean I got to market this now? So what was your biggest uh-oh? Uh oh, as uh, once you finished your book, I would say, well, you know, I had a writing coach. And so, therefore, with the writing coach, I think that helped me get through a lot of the uh oh's before the uh oh happened, you know? So, I think there was some uh oh's just being coached. Because, like, I had deadlines, and you like, you know, I'm a professional. I, you know, run a clinic. I have, you know, many things I'm doing, and to be able to manage my time, you know, is one thing. But then also have a coach that says, okay, well, I have to manage your time too, or help you in this capacity if you want this to manifest itself. So I would say, like, the time management in, in like things that were needed to be done and do on top of me having a fully, you know, um, overwhelming schedule. And to be able to, like, be productive writing the book even during that time. So I I would say my uh uh-oh was time management throughout in just being disciplined and focused with my writing coach Um, because, you know, there were so many steps to do. Like, okay, you got to do this next. You got to do this next. And, okay, you got to go on here and register here. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I would say throughout, you know, the experience of writing a book, you know, it's more than what people truly think or hear. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sitting here nodding my head. Yes. It is. Right? <laughs> so it was, it was like throughout, yeah. Yes, yeah, so the writing part is the easy part, and and you right. you're like, wait a minute, all these other steps. Wait, wait a minute, I, this is too fast for me. So yes, I agree. I agree. Yes, and and, it's, and you know, I, it's my first book, and so it's like you know, being a published author is something I accomplished. But my writing coach, that's her lane. That's what she does. You know, my lane is health and wellness. So I was also getting into a lane that. You know, I don't have the knowledge in the capacity of, you know, producing it. So that's why my writing coach had to keep me on track. You know, that was information I I didn't know. Right, right. So I respect, I mean, I respect, you know, published authors. I respect people that write. I respect people that, you know, put their time and their effort and energy and their heart into you know, creating something for people, whether it's enjoyment or, you know, educational or whatever their genre is, I respect it because I've gone through it, right? It's different when you've gone through it. Absolutely, absolutely. It is definitely different. And like you say, my lane is um, my lane is, is teaching, education, and um, that was, you know, after so many years, that's been easy. But right. when I started writing, because a lot of people had said to me, well, Denise, you're a teacher, so you get it. I, and I said, do you, do you realize that writing in, uh, writing a whole book is different from teaching language arts? It, it's right. Different. You don't write whole books in language arts. They write an essay. And so it's, you're right. It is absolutely different. It's something that you learn and you keep learning over and over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. And I'm excited to write again. So, you know, um, 
I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged. That's awesome. That's awesome. So one of the, um, and I think you kind of gave your inspiration, but I w- always ask this fun question as well. Are there any suggestions, and I know you talk about time management, um, to that you would give to aspiring writers um, to prepare them for the journey of writing? And I know you talked about time management, but are there any other suggestions? I would say self-compassion. And self-compassion for me is all about a strategy for the struggle. And, like, whatever they're struggling with, to have compassion for themselves about that. And um, to know that when you write, like, write from the heart. And to get into that space, you know, be free. Because you can always go back and edit. But be free in what you put on paper and enjoy writing and just be grateful to have the opportunity and to experience that because it's beautiful. And I would say whatever type of genre they're going to go into, just make sure they enjoy it and have fun with it because all the other stuff is going to have to happen anyway. So when you put your pen or pencil down on paper, not just a tablet and you type it in, but actually do your own handwriting. It changes things. And I think it also, you know, helps us as writers grow. And I think we're free when we write. I mean, for me, you know, I was free. And what I wanted to express and how I wanted to express it. And, and, you know, I didn't always worry about is it relatable? I thought about the moment I wonder if it's relatable, I'm going to tell a story so that I can relate. And so for me, it was so deep and so profound that um, I just would say just have fun and have self-compassion for yourself. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And tell the audience once again how to purchase your book and then tell them how to connect with you on social media or repeat your email. Okay. You can purchase my book at Amazon.com, um, ebook and paperback, or wellnessoflifeproducts.com. So that's wellnessoflifeproducts.com. Also, you can contact me at wellnessoflife at gmail.com as well. My phone number is 916-905-7743. And also, our social media handles are, for Instagram, Live Wellness of Life. And our Facebook is Wellness of Life. And I think that I think that's all of them. Did I miss anything, Miss Denise? No, I think you got it. I think you got it. And thank you for sharing. I just this was a blessing to me because a lot of times we don't talk about health and wellness. And um, God wants us to our temple. To He wants to use our temple, and we can't. He can't use it when we are sick and ailing and no energy. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Yes, yes, absolutely. And the thing is also just knowing that there's still hope if a person does not have that because you can always replenish. You can always replenish and know that God has given us all that we need and we have to align with that. And in alignment with that and the relationship that we have with God, you know, the Holy Spirit can fulfill that. We just have to be willing to contribute to that relationship and show up for that relationship as well because that's the most important relationship that we could ever have. Amen, amen, amen. So, again, Angela Harris, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I'm going to pray us out, and I just pray that you continue to do what God has called you to do in that lane of health and wellness. And um 
please come back when when you want to talk about your next book or whatever other project you want to talk about. So um, thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. All right. So Father, we thank you for Angela. We thank you for her ministry. I call it ministry, Lord. I thank you for what she's doing. I pray that you would bless her, give her the grace she needs, God. We pray, oh God, for the provision for her clinic and everything that you have her doing. Lord, we just thank you for what you put our hands to do, God. And we pray, oh God, that she will continue to just bless people all over the world and that whoever's listening have, has listened to her voice and heard about health and wellness, God, and learned and will reach out to her. So, God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Yes, Jesus' name, amen. So we yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. And thank you for those who are tu have tuned in to Hope in Christ with Denise. Have a phenomenal rest of your week.